and make ourselves, I'm going to draw myself a better circle. All right, change my color, and here's my initial side. Now let's make a right angle right there. Now this is where geometry and trig sort of part ways because it's really weird to think about trying to build that right triangle like we did on the last page where I've got an angle here of, of 90 degrees, but we don't panic. Look, all I do is I remember that this is the unit circle, so it's x squared plus y squared equals 1, and I know that this point right here is 0, comma 1. All right, and we're off to the races. I stick this here, and I know that sine of, ooh, 90 degrees. Well, let's see, 90 degrees. What was that again in terms of radians? Let's see, so I'm going to do a little side work over here. 90 degrees times pi radians over 180 degrees. Oh, look at that, it's pi halves. All right, so this is an angle measure of pi halves. Whoops. No, oh, sorry about that. It's the sine of pi halves. Getting ahead of myself, aren't I? Or behind myself, as the case may be. It's the sine of pi halves. Now, remember, sine is always y. So the sine of pi halves is the y value, which is 1. Cosine of pi halves. Now, notice I'm trying to train you to get into the mode of thinking in terms of radians. I'm not asking you to abandon your understanding of degrees, but I'm saying if we have everything in radians, if we have the ability, excuse me, to be fluent in jumping back and forth from degrees to radians, it'll make our lives easier. Cosine of pi halves is zero. What's tangent of pi halves? Well, tangent is y over x, one over zero. Oh, bummer. It does not exist. If I go Cosecant of pi halves. Cosecant is, let's see, it was 1 over y, wasn't it? We can, if push, meet, shove, you can always scroll back here. And look at that. Cosecant is 1 over y. Secant is 1 over x. Cotangent is x over y. So we'll sally back over this way. And we end up with uh, 1 over y, which is 1 over 1 which is 1. The secant of pi halves is 1 over x, which in this case is 1 over 0, crud, that does not exist, and the cotan of pi halves is... Now, this is kind of a strange little phenomenon that we have to wrap our brains around numerically. How do you take the reciprocal of something that doesn't exist? Well, it's built numerically. This tangent of pi halves doesn't exist because it's 1 over 0. It's sine, it's, excuse me, it's y over x. But remember, cotan is x over y. So if I, again, just stumble up to my point up here, if I cruise up here, I just grab my x and I grab my y, guess what I get? I get 0 over 1. We're not afraid of that one. And that's 0. All right, now, here's what I'd like you to try, just really quickly. I'd like you to find, whoops, I'd like you to find the sine, the cosine, and the tangent of the other two quadrantal angles. So I want you to find the sine of pi, please don't, I've got the cosine of pi and the tangent of pi, and I want you to find the sine of 3 pi halves, the cosine of 3 pi halves, and the tangent of 3 pi halves. But before I cut you loose on that, let's make sure that we know what 3 pi halves is. And excuse me, what the, what the angle measure of pi is. Remember, if I start here and pi equals 180 degrees, so that is going to finish right there at that point, which is negative 1 comma zero. If I do three pi halves, let's do that with red, that means I start here, remember angle in standard position, and I wrap around, excuse me, three pi halves, one more time, that's going to get me 
all the way around to here. My terminal side is on the negative side of the y-axis. Gets me right to that point. I'm going to draw that angle through, and I end up with 0, negative 1. Now, take a minute. And I want you to, uh, let's, let's give it a little bit more. I want you to go through the process of finding the sine, cos, and tangent of pi and 3 pi halves. We're getting some free information here. So good luck, and uh, I'll be back in just a moment. Hope everybody tried that out. The answers that you should have gotten were that sine of pi is 0, cosine of pi is negative 1, and tangent of pi is 0, and that's because they come from this point over here on the unit circle, negative 1 comma 0, so sine which is y, 0, cosine which is x is negative 1, and tangent is the ratio of y over x, so we get 0. At 3 pi halves, we end up down here at 0 comma negative 1, and then I just roll through, sine is y, so negative 1, Cosine is x, which is 0, and tangent does not exist. Now, just a real quick last note. Um, I don't mean to be flip about not men mentioning cosecant of theta, secant of theta, and cotan of theta. And the reason why is because the reason I, I don't mention them is because if I have sine, I automatically have cosecant. I just take the reciprocal of it. If I have cosine, I automatically have secant. When I have tangent, I automatically have cotangent, which is really cool because it really means that all you need are the three biggies, sine, cos, and tan. In the next little segment, I'm going to talk about some more free points that we can put on the unit circle so that we can figure out a few more um, values of theta for which we know sine, cos, and tan. I hope you enjoyed it, and I'll see you in the next segment.